Labor MPs are sweating over the lack of support from voters for the voice to parliament. The Australian Today reporting that Labor MPs are getting the jitters, with some asking for even more spending on the Yes campaign, including signage, ads and mass mail-outs. All the while, Australians struggle in this cost of living crisis. For more on this and the rest of the day's top stories, I'm joined by the Australian newspaper's columnist and former editor-in-chief, Chris Mitchell. Chris, thank you for joining us this evening. Look, it's not looking good right now for Labor on The Voice. Can this be salvaged for the Prime Minister? Or do you think the reality is, and, and do you think Albanese will have to face the reality, that this is looking like a defeat? Hi, Shari. Thanks for having me. Look, um, you wouldn't want to be Anthony Albanese or indeed any Aboriginal kid in this country the day after a referendum uh, went down. And I think it's uh, surprising and full of hubris that um, both the government and so many of its advisers were so quick to rule out any compromise, particularly on a voice to executive government. Um, they may rue this. And I think it's been clear for the last six months that the polling has been heading south. And as Dennis Shanahan pointed out in the Oz this morning, um, some of the polling in the latest numbers shows that core Labor supporters on this and core young voters are drifting to the no camp. So I think it's going to be a difficult one for the government to salvage. But I don't know that Albanese can do as Dutton says and legislate a voice and just have a referendum on a recognition proposition because that would be like walking away from the ETS that that Rudd walked away from in 2010 and cost him his leadership. Mm, but perhaps a compromise solution, even if it is just recognising Indigenous uh, recognition in the Constitution, uh, if it does look like it's going to be a catastrophic failure, at least that would give the Prime Minister some sort of win, as you say, otherwise the day after the referendum, the way it's going, the way the polls are going, already less than 50% and we're still a few months out if, if they hold it between October and December. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, now, today, Workplace Relations Minister Tony Burke has reportedly, this is according to an exclusive by Jeff Chambers, he's apparently abandoned the same job, same pay label, this from the federal government's labour hire IR reforms. This is an attempt to save the reforms. Uh, industry leaders have warned that slogans and messages aren't going to change the substance of what these reforms are. Chris, we are seeing that business and employer groups are teaming up. Uh, they argue that this is quite radical IR reform. And one thing is for sure, this is not good for productivity, which in turn is impacting on inflation. Look, what do you think of these IR changes proposed by Tony Burke? How problematic are they for our economy? Well, look, Sherry, I think they show that um, this idea that the government was following in the reform footsteps of Hawke and Keating is uh, a bit of a furphy. Uh, there's no productivity gains here. And uh, like last year's um, first round of industrial relations reforms that ushered in pattern bargaining again, this round will only please one group in society, and that will be the large unions. Um, and you can certainly understand why big mining companies and big project managers are concerned here. So while it might sound OK that labour hire firms pay the same wages as, as companies do, a lot of these uh, big companies are worried about uh, contractors who come in and do specific projects for BHP mm. or Consinc Rio Tinto and they have a specific expertise in an area. Now, it depends how the legislation's framed, but a lot of big businesses are very concerned that this could actually make some big projects and some mines unprofitable. Chris, you wrote a very thoughtful column uh, this week. You argue that the modern ABC has forgotten its core purpose, the B standing for broadcasting, uh, under its current leadership. How do you think the public broadcaster has lost sight of its purpose? Uh, once again, we're seeing the ABC in uh, the political spotlight, Michelle Rowland demanding answers from the public broadcaster over 120 redundancies, including the decision to axe the role of political editor. You know, what do you think? Why do you think it needs a leadership reboot? Well, Shari, I think that what's going on really proves the truth of uh, what Mark Scott said 10 years ago when he labelled uh, the ABC a market failure broadcaster really having a bit of a crack at News Corp and our supposed uh, right-wing bias. 
I think the truth here is that the charter of the ABC and, in fact, the enti entire intention of setting up the ABC was to uh, allow a government institution uh, to perform broadcast functions on radio and television in areas where commercial media could not operate profitably. Now, um, under the Gillard government, there was the writing in of a digital uh, part of the charter, so it does now have some purview over digital. But the idea that we need a government involved in uh, the provision of digital content is sort of ludicrous, given this is the fastest area of mm. content growth on the planet. So do we really, do we really need some government operating TikTok uh, mm. and ABC producers, um, you know, producing things that really are better left to the market?